Good day, fellow investors. New office, new life, new cycle. And I wanted to start with something mind-blowing and something that gives you little explosions in your head with every paragraph that you read is The Margin of Safety by Seth Klarman. Absolutely the best book out there on value investing. Every sentence is as good now as it was in 1991. So I want to start with the summary chapter by chapter. In this video, we'll just give a short summary of Seth Klarman, who Seth Klarman is, and then start with chapter one. So who is Seth Klarman? Seth Klarman was the founder, started at the Baupost Group in 1982, and since then, over now 40 years, has achieved remarkable investment returns of around 20% per year. So he is right there on top with Warren Buffett. We have made a few videos for Seth Klarman, so I'll put the link for those videos in the description below, and you can check more on him if you're interested in learning more about Seth Klarman, what is his current opinion, but also through the summary, I'll try to use as much as possible contemporary examples. For returns, Seth Klarman achieved 20% per year for the first 30 years, then he started managing risks, so we don't have the details on the last 10 years, but he's doing his job properly. And the book that even Warren Buffett said that he reads almost daily is Seth Klarman's Margin of Safety. Now, also to understand how a person invests, it's always good to look at his stocks. Seth Klarman has 30 billion under management, but not all is in stock. Some is in debt, some is in real estate, special situations. Nevertheless, we can take a look at his positions. So if we go to stock circle, the first interesting thing is to understand that Seth Klarman has a portfolio of total value of 7 billion in stocks out of 30 billion. So he is not that exposed to stocks. Then if we look at stocks, those are all uncovered, not hot stocks. So Liberty Global, European Telecommunications, Extreme Buybacks, the full coverage is on my platform. We have Corvo, so semiconductors, radio and television, so he sees value there, satellite telecommunication, printing and writing paper, some Google data processing with the government, uh, Liberty Media, more, some Intel, he has sold half of it recently, Warner Bros. Discovery, we'll discuss it soon in the portfolio update as this is in the YouTube portfolio that we have here publicly and many other companies, so very diversified, small stakes, maybe just testing, but you can see that he is finding value all around the globe in different situations. So 23 billion is not invested in stocks and the stocks he is invested in are very, very interesting and likely hard to comprehend for most of people. So let's start with the book summary. Now, when it comes to the book, it's risk averse strategies for the value investor. Value investing is about first focusing on risk avoiding it as much as you can, and then everything else comes secondary and normal. If you have low risk, then automatically your return will be great compared to that risk. And what Seth Klarman wants you to have is avoid losing strategies, and that's the core of value investing. If you avoid losing strategies, then you can simply compound over the long term and make a lot of money. Plus, what is value investing? Value investing is the strategy of investing in securities at an appreciable discount. That's the key discount from underlying value and has a long history of delivering excellent investment returns with very limited downside risk. So you buy something at a discount and by buying something at a discount, you have limited downside risk. So this is, let's say, the value of a growing, developing business and it, let's say, grows over time recessions, but the stock price goes up and down and value investing is about focusing on buying something when it's below in underlying value. And with the market going up and down and being crazy, you can often find those opportunities. And the key is that there is absolutely less risk if you buy here, because risk is a factor of price. 
And if you buy here, given that you paid less and there is value, there is a much lower chance of losing money. So it's a factor of price than if you buy here and you do not consider a risk when it comes to investing. Very important is that this book doesn't provide a surefire formula for investment success. Such a formula doesn't exist. This is just a blueprint and therefore I want to do really a summary because this has to be repeated and imprinted in our minds so that we don't make stupid mistakes ahead and that we can achieve investment success with limited risk. We're going to do all the summary chapter by chapter. I already prepared most of them as I enjoyed this summer reading the book and improving my strategies. So I really hope this will give you a lot of value. And if you like value investing, if you enjoy these videos, if those give you value, please give a margin of safety to my channel, support it by smashing that like button. And if you haven't, consider subscribing and smash that notification bell so that you get notified every week as I put on a new margin of safety chapter summary. Thank you very much. Now, chapter one, where most investors stumble. And what is the difference between speculators and successful investors? The core is that you must never speculate. And that is the core thread line through the book. If you don't speculate, if you focus on risk, you do well investing wise over your life investing cycle. And for that, we have to define who is an investor and who is a speculator. If we look at an investor, let's say these two people opened a bar or something, what do they care about? They care about their ownership. If you buy stocks, then you have fractional ownership. But what you care most is the underlying business. You don't care so much about when you're going to sell this for more money, for less money, for something. You are trying to manage the business, get a dividend, grow that business. And the benefit that we have as we buy stocks is that we can sell when the value of that is above the underlying value and we can buy when it is way below. That is an investor, but you don't speculate on buying this and then having it open for a year and betting everything that you can sell it for more money. And to quote Seth Klarman, investors make buy and sell decisions on the basis on the current prices of securities compared with the perceived values of those securities. So investors transact when they think they know something that others don't know, don't care about or prefer to ignore. They buy securities that appear to offer attractive return for the risk incurred and sell when the return no longer justifies the risk. How do you come to what others don't know, don't care about or prefer to ignore will be explained in the latter chapters. The first thing an investor believes is that over the long term, security prices tend to reflect fundamental developments involving the underlying business. So if earnings of the underlying business grow, so will over time, the stock price follow. The only difference is that the stock price will go up and down. And if you can buy it below when it is down, you have a margin of safety. And let me show you something here. So these are the revenues of Google. Let's take it from uh, 2011. So we have 2011, 37 billion and those were growing to 278 billion. So growth in revenues. And if we, and if we compare it to the stock price, it went from, uh, let's say 13, 14, 15 to after the split and everything, 107. So if we take a look at Google's numbers, you will see this more in detail and we clearly explain what value investing is and what Buffett and Klarman always say that the stock price eventually follows the business. That's the core to understand. If we look at Google from 2011 till 2021, revenues went up 6.7 times. And if I look at the stock price from 2011, let's say after 2011 numbers were clear, from 2011 to now, with ups and downs, of course, it went up seven times. So. Google's stock growth really represents the 
price over the long term. Of course, the stock goes up and down. And if we check Google's price, there have been some bad times, some crashes, crashes. Now recently, also a lot of exuberance here. So we have to see how this develops over time. But this is another one to add to our YouTube portfolio to follow and to learn as Google is definitely a great business. And if we can buy it when it is below its intrinsic value, then we have a value investment on our hand and even Klarman owns it. So that's something for the rest of the month. And now when it comes to profiting from buying under intrinsic value and following those businesses, you can profit in three ways as Seth Klarman puts it. From the free cash flow generated by the underlying business, which will eventually over the years three to five years usually be reflected in a higher share price or distributed as dividends. The second way to profit is from an increase in the multiple that investors are willing to pay for the underlying business. Sometimes the multiple is, I don't know, eight. And then suddenly when things improve, investors are willing to pay 15. So that's also a way to gain money. Another way to profit from value investing is by narrowing the gap between the share price and underlying business value. And different than what Buffett does, when that gap narrows by some catalyst that we'll discuss later, then Seth Klarman usually sells and goes on to the next. Because when the gap narrows, there is no more margin of safety. And let's say that's value investing. So this is something also that Warren Buffett did in the 50s and the 60s when he was looking for cigar butts. So who is a speculator? A speculator is a speculator that buys and sells securities based on whether they believe those securities will next rise or fall in price. Their judgment regarding future price movements is based not on fundamentals. Of course, everyone is looking at future price movements, but not on fundamentals, but on a prediction of the behavior of others. And the fear and activity actually creates better value investing opportunities as they sell into the fear that stocks will go lower. So speculators sell and make those even cheaper for us value investors. The core of the speculating idea is that stocks are there just to be traded. So just looking, okay, I made 40% here, I'm buying this, it's going up, it's going down. It's not that stocks are investments and where you make money on the three key points that we just discussed. The main question for speculators is where will the market go? So what will happen to the market? And that's also when I make a video on the market or stock market crashing or something like that, that is usually the most watched because 95% of people are speculators. And the reality also, Seth Klarman says, no one knows what the market will do. Trying to predict it is a waste of time and investing based upon that prediction is speculative undertaking. On the contrary, investors have a reasonable chance of achieving long-term investment success. Speculators, by contrast, are likely to lose money over time. Of course, speculators will make money here and there, but you make that money and then after you made it, you go into the next speculation where it's much more likely for you to lose money. And there is this great story about sardines where sardines were scarce and uh, the prices went up and those sardines were there trading. Everybody was buying sardines. And one day a buyer decided to treat himself to an expensive meal and actually opened the can and started eating. He immediately became ill and told the seller the sardines were no good. The seller said, you don't understand. These are not eating sardines. Those are trading sardines. So great point of speculating without fundamentals, without the intrinsic value. Also, when you're speculating, you're looking for the greater fool who will pay more than what you paid for something. In today's world, we can see a lot of that in the crypto environment, NFTs, 
watches are incredibly popular even sneakers were popular so you buy a sneaker to sell it at a, another price and also many many stocks but then again there is a warning for value investors business fundamentals are not necessarily a limiting factor in securities pricing the resulting propensity of the stock market to periodically become and remain overvalued is all the more reason for fundamental investors to be careful. Over the last decade, we have seen this something when the market becomes and remains overvalued for a very, very long time. And then everybody was saying for value investing is that it's all about growth, growth, growth. Now things are changing a little bit, but we have to always be careful avoiding any overpriced investments that will require selling to another even greater fool. Great examples, and there are plenty of examples in history. Seth Klarman's use the examples of uh, disc driver makers. The market capitalization of 12 of them was 5 billion in 1983, just to see later a big drop and drop to 70% to 1.5 billion by 1985. Of course, this was the technology of the future, but as soon as you have competition, technology developments, it's very hard that you will make money on these tools. Similarly, a Spain fund uh, owning stocks in Spain was trading at double net asset value because the Japanese were buying the fund, not the underlying stocks, no matter the price that also finished badly. Another example, the average holding of 10-year treasuries is 20 days. So nobody buys the 10-year treasury for the 0.7% yield in 2021 or currently the 3% yield with 7% inflation. You are losing minus 4 of purchasing power if you hold this bond forever plus over 30 years, who knows what will happen to the US government and the dollar. So most here are speculators hoping that interest rates go down and then the value of the bond goes up or vice versa if they are short. When it comes to investments versus speculations, you have to always think investments make value. So you get your rent, it makes products you can sell, so businesses, services, wood make timber, woods also grow, etc. So that's something that constantly creates value. Speculations don't create value and only depend on the resale price. Just a few examples, sport cards, art, for example, collectibles, those are not investments, keep in mind. A friend recently told me that he's going to buy a Rolex because that is an asset. No, that is just a nice shiny thing that gives you the time and when there is more buyers of course prices go up because they have liquidity as we have seen last years but when those prices go down in 10 20 years in two years then you will see a lot of trouble and it's very interesting that the watch sector on youtube gets practically more views than the investing sector so depends on resale, don't be fooled by the greater fool. So you always have to find someone to pay more for that. Stocks pay dividends or grow their businesses and bonds pay coupons. But in these times, I don't know how much value there is in the coupon. Then another difference between successful and unsuccessful investors is that successful investors are unemotional. And Seth Klarman, uh, just says it in a few sentences, but this is perhaps, and with dealing with five years of YouTube, sensation that I get that's very hard to comprehend. What does it mean unemotional? It means that you can make rational decisions no matter what you did in the past, no matter the losses you are in, the positives you are in, you just make the decision that is best for that point in time. And I know whenever I sell a stock that I bought at a higher price and somebody else followed because at that higher price it fit their risk and reward. And if I sell lower, I get so much hate, emotions because I sold lower. So it's extremely different to separate your emotions and that's something we'll dig deeper at a later time. It looks like for Seth Klarman, that's a such easy thing to separate money from emotions and 
therefore he just puts one paragraph but it is one of the key paragraphs of his book then it's also about having confidence in your own analysis and the details we'll discuss more in the latter chapters how to know something is a value investment and of course demonstrate caution in frothy markets and steadfast conviction in panicky ones where others are panicking you have to understand okay now it's time to go in because the prices are lower understand the risk and reward and with lower prices the risk is already lower and the reward is higher the next paragraph is about how to take advantage of mr market and the speculators irrationality the reality is that mr market knows nothing being the product of the collective action of thousands of buyers and sellers who themselves are not always motivated by investment fundamentals. Emotional investors and speculators inevitably lose money. Investors who take advantage of Mr. Market's periodic irrationality, by contrast, have a good chance of enjoying a long-term investing success. Something that he then describes is the stock price reinforcement trap. In 2020, when ARK's funds were the best investment of the year, here, 2020, 2021, the beginning, everyone was saying, okay, you have to buy this to get exposure to the new trends. There is no solution. And that stock price reinforcement trap, as everyone wants to buy what goes up, really made it very, very badly when for things returned to fundamentals, if there are fundamentals so you can take advantage of mr market this is just arc but just think how it must be a much better investment now than it was here higher sorry for the hikaru confusion and we all see now that the price is lower then the speculators are pulling out money of arc funds because the price is lower and they are going away from there and i'm happy i can call myself value investing because this was made in february 2021 beginning of the year peak arc when everyone was so cool about arc i explained the investing da danger from a value investment perspective and also on their research and everything uh, so that was value investing and also the core of the book is to avoid these strategies if you can avoid these things over time then you do well and the key is that value in relation to price not price alone must determine your investment decisions so many look at the price must be good because it's going up but it's value in relation to price security prices move up and down for two basic reasons to reflect business reality so investing or investors perceptions of that reality or to reflect short-term variations in supply and demand this is core to understand so business reality so that's what securities reflect or short-term variation in supply and demand that's what makes stock prices move and when you understand that and when you can compare value the business reality in relation to price then you can take advantage of mr market of course on a macroeconomic level a broad-based decline in interest rates a drop in corporate taxes or a rise in the expected rate of economic growth could each precipitate a general increase in security prices? We have seen a broad-based decline in interest rates over the last 12 years. Now that has reverting a little bit. We have seen a drop in corporate taxes when Trump lowered those. And we haven't seen an expected rate of economic growth and maybe we will not see it. But we have had two of the three factors over the last actually 40 years that pushed stocks higher it might be different in the future and then another example so uh, 1991 when the book was written biotechnology was the cool thing because biotech will change the world and that of course didn't work that fast 
and in the short run supply and demand alone determine market prices so what the market thinks if there are many large sellers and few buyers prices fall sometimes beyond reason and if you can understand that that's value investing it can result from year-end tax selling institutional stampede out of a stock that just reported disappointing earnings or an unpleasant rumor most day-to-day -day market price fluctuations result from supply and demand variations rather than fundamental developments that's key to understand and investors must look beyond security prices to underlying business value, always comparing the price and the underlying business value. Just an example of perhaps my best value investment. So in 2015, nobody wanted to buy a house in the Netherlands and we bought this house for 284,000 euros. You get a fixed mortgage for 30 years that gives you 103% of the value of the house. You can even put a new kitchen. And that costed me 1,384 per month after getting back some taxes. I think it was 1,100 per month to buy this. The value there was that renting that house out for someone was back then around 2,000. It's close to Amsterdam. It's a nice city was Blericum. So I was looking at 1000 compared to 2000 or if I moved out of the Netherlands without the job 1300 compared to 2000 and that is value. There I made a video on it uh, how we sold it in 2019 and you can check that. I'll put all the video links in the description below also for the next chapters as I make them. When you find something like this then you know you have a margin of safety so when you find a margin of safety, that's a value investment because what had to go wrong for rents to fall, I don't know, 35% so that I cannot cover my monthly payment or even more, half of this monthly payment with a low interest rate was equity in the house. So it was an amazing investment and we did good. It's even an error this was a total error but we sold for private reasons because uh, the best thing would be to just rent it out and hold it forever and that would be one pension for me but we had to sell it for other reasons and that was clearly a mistake the guy that bought already made more on it than we did now unsuccessful investors and costly emotions the key is that they spend no time analyzing the fundamentals and then when the mania reaches a peak, is recognized it for what it is, it reverses course and turns into a selling panic. Greed gives away to fear and investor losses can be enormous. Mania and panic. So we have had many examples over time. Seth Klarman discusses uh, Wall Streeters as 1980s junk bonds. And the key there is that people are forgetting about risk. Risk, 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 risk is the core of value investment. And if you can start getting that with our summary of the book, then even Seth Klarman's target has been reached of avoiding wrong investments. Over the last few years, I got so many emails about, Sven, what do you think about investing in P2P, P2P, P2P? And over the last years, I haven't got any questions about P2P. So that must have been wrong. Just think of the risk of investing in P2P. So you're giving money to someone that can't get a loan from a bank. So the risk is higher. Yes, the interest rate is also higher. But when things change, when they don't have more money from government grants and everything, then all the fundamentals change and you have this solution. So always it is about risk, risk and risk and that is value investing. That is the core also of Seth Klarman's book. Now on a topic, the search for an investment formula, search for the holy grail in investing, the attempt to find a successful investment formula. Seth Klarman says that it doesn't exist. It might be there for a short period of time, low P, buy the dip, factor investment, ETF strategy, alpha, beta, this or that. 
The only thing is to focus on fundamentals, understand how those fundamentals compare to the price. Keep in mind, each business has different fundamentals and then you see when there is underlying value. To conclude the first chapter, financial markets offer many temptations to vulnerable investors. So those temptations have to be avoided. It's easy to do the wrong thing, to speculate rather to invest. Emotions lies dangerously close to the surface for most investors and can be particularly intense when market prices move dramatically in either direction. It's crucial that investors understand the difference between speculating and investing and learn to take advantage of the opportunities presented by Mr. Market. I hope you enjoyed this chapter. Next chapter, chapter two, is how Wall Street works against you. You have to deal with Wall Street, but you have to understand how it works against you so that it doesn't take advantage of you. Smash that like button to support these summaries. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next chapter.